Hi, this is David Abanak-Turtle, the second in the free series on operational risk modeling that I'm doing with Pristine. And here I'd like to briefly review the quantile function. Now, the quantile function is not an advanced idea in itself, but I have found that just because it's an inversion of the way that we look at the distribution, it ends up being difficult in language or idea. But to illustrate it, I've selected three of the most popular discrete distributions that we use to characterize or describe the frequency of operational losses. And that's the binomial, the Poisson, and the negative binomial. So you'll notice we're starting with the zero, and these, is a, these are counting variables, random counting random variables going to the right. And plotted, um, I've tried to express the discrete with plots of dots instead of a continuous line. Now these are all siblings, and if you'd like to retrieve the spreadsheet, I'll put the link up, you can actually see how I sh uh, solve these uh, density functions recursively to show that they're all part of the same so-called AB0 class of distributions. So that's a technical point if you want to pull up the spreadsheet just to see how they're siblings. I just like to thought it's interesting to show that they really are part of the same family. However, here's a key difference. The Poisson here plotted with the pink dots has variance equal to mean. The binomial in blue has variance less than mean. And the negative binomial has variance greater than mean. However, they're all discrete. I've just plotted for the binomial some vertical bars to illustrate the quantile function. So now let's look at that. But first, let's show why it's an inversion because we typically look at this distribution and we ask a question like, what's the probability our random variable x will be 11 or less? And the answer will come back as a percentage, a probability between 0 and 1. The quantile function inverts that and asks it this way. But first we need the assumption, that's this line here. If the frequency of losses is binomial, let's, that is to say, is, if that random variable of the frequency of losses is characterized by a binomial distribution with a mean of 8. Now I made that up. That binomial has two parameters, n and p. I made these up. Probability of 40% times number of trials, 20. The, the mean in the case of the binomial is the product of n and p or 8. So I made that up. And you can see that 8 here is the mean. It's also the mode, the highest probability. It's almost 18%. Now, let's just make a note that we made two huge assumptions here. First, we specified what kind of distribution, because the binomial here has a different personality, although it's in the same family as Poisson and negative binomial, it's got a different personality than the other distributions that we might choose. And then, after choosing the distribution, we had to fit the distribution to our data, so we've also selected parameters. So here, collectively, we made some couple of big assumptions about the frequency of losses. But okay, let's say we've done that. Now here is the quantile function. And you'll notice, instead of, instead of specif asking a question about a value, we ask a question about a probability. And we say, with, in this case, I'm picking this number out, with 90% confidence, what is the maximum expected number of losses? So the answer to that is the quantile. And in this case, the binomial, the reason I pulled the binomial out is that uh, the binomial is one of the rare functions where we can solve that analytically or with an Excel function. The most functions require a numerical solution. So here I use the binomial inverse to indicate an inverse cumulative distribution function. I specify the two parameters and here's that probability and it returns for me 11. And what it's saying is if 90% is my probability, I get out here 11 is the quantile that is the answer. So I could look at this two ways. I could say roughly, these are discrete, so I'm gonna, now I'm speaking in round terms, but I could say, well, roughly 90% of the time I'm gonna have 11 or less number of losses. And that means, conversely, that 10% of the time, the number of losses is going to be 12 or more. A little bit of a technical issue here as to where we put that 
where we put this uh, goal post, so to speak, given that this probability is continuous, yet these distributions are discrete. So we have a few choices. I'm gonna ignore that subtlety right now. And I'm just gonna check the answer here by coming back and using the binomial distribution function and asking a different question. What is the probability that X will be less than or equal to 11? So that's the way we're used to asking the question and we get 94%. And so this is the normal way of looking at it. Here's the quantile function. And it's telling us that if 90% is our cumulative probability or our confidence level here in this one tail perspective, that our quantile is 11. 90% with 90% confidence, we do not expect the number of losses in the period to exceed the 11. So that was for the binomial. And now let's just contrast this. If you want to pull up the spreadsheet, I've got the normal in there just for a comparison because we can get the quantile for the normal distribution. And I've also solved that with the same mean and variance of the binomial. So notice in going from 11 here to an answer of 10.81, I kept the same assumption for mean and variance and then I just, but I just switched distributions from a binomial to a normal, and I got a quantile of 10.81. Now my Poisson is plotted in pink dots here, and notice its variance is equal to its mean. So its variance, it's a more dispersed for the same mean than the binomial. And you can see that visually as this right tail starts to head out. And here, now I don't have an Excel or analytical solution, so that's in the underlying spreadsheet. Here the answer to, what is the quantile at 90%? So I, my question concerns a 90% probability. In other words, if I want 90% of the area under this curve, at what X value do I get to? And the Poisson distribution, the answer happens to be 12, so it kicks out a little bit. And so, and that was what I wanted to illustrate. For the same mean here, by switching the distribution, I get a little bit, I get more skew. The tail's a little thicker, if you like, here. And I'm going to get a higher number for the same probability or confidence level. And then now what about my negative binomial? This is really underrated, uh, really useful, I think, um, very flexible for the frequency distribution plotted here in green. You can see how far it goes out. Same mean of eight. But here the answer is, if the question is, where at what value does the area under this curve equal 90%? In other words, if I want to be 90% confidence, that the frequency of my losses will be less than or equal to what value? What is that value? It's 15. So right about here, 90% of the time, I'm going to get 15 losses or less, and 10% of the time, I'm going to get more. But with the same mean, I switch to the negative binomial distribution, and for the same probability or confidence level, I get a higher quantile value. You can see really it's all about the, spe the selection of my distribution and then the parameterization of the distribution. And that's really all that we're doing with the quantile function, aka inverse cumulative distribution function. This is David Harper of Bionic Turtle in partnership with Pristine. Thanks for your time.